Yeah, what Sconset Market now used to be owned by John Salvas. And he had a repair shop there for cars, did a grease job on it, had a barber shop in the corner of the house. They had the grocery store. Then, of course, you had the post office, Sconset Bookstore, and then where Claudette's is now, up until World War II, a &P used to rent that every summer and have a grocery store in there. But when it, during World War II, when it was so hard to get help, they just abandoned it and never bothered with it again. You know, I purchased the, the Sconset Market in 1982. I, I first was offered it to run it as a manager, and which I did for three years. At that time, it was owned by Robert Shetterly, who founded the Sconset Trust. And it had been floundering, kind of going under, and, and he bought it just to stick someone in there. He said, I want a market that's happening in, in Sconset. He was a, a true citizen of Sconset. So he said to me, you run it, and here's the amount of rent. I forget what the number was, the nominal number. And he said, at the end of the summer, then we'll close a deal, and, and I'll sell it to you. I'm just not ready just yet. So at the end of the summer, I approached him. I said, I think I turned it around. I think I did a good job. I really would like this. He said, I've got some tax problems with the Clorox Corporation. I can't really close it. It's no rent for me this year. Hold, hold off on the rent, but if you're doing a good job, will you please come back next year? So when I was a kid, I worked there in the summers, um, scooping ice cream, and, um, and there were a few of us who were, and you worked there too, stocking, right, and stuff like that. Um, so um, that was a way that I felt like I got to know a lot of people in the village was working there. I'm, I give entry-level jobs to kids on this island, probably at least 200 scones of kids. Their first job is at the Sconza Market. Even if it was just coming on Sunday morning for 45 minutes to insert the sports section inside of the entertainment section inside of the front page. I hired every kid and I've gone through and I was approaching when I just retired last year, a third generation of kids was approaching me about their first job. Can I come in and work for a few hours? The functionality <laughs> of the four basic businesses down there at the market, what we call the bookstore, it's now the cafe and Claudette's. Um, and you could get ice cream and you could get candy and you could yeah. get something to read and you could get a little bit of food and you used to, be able to get, you know, fill up your car, but that was, that ended a long time ago. Exact same story takes place the next year. I run it again. I approach him at the end of the season, said, I'd like to close on it. He says, I've got these tax ramifications. I can't do it. The third year, he calls me up. I've never been invited inside of his house. He calls me up, says, come up for a drink. This is at the closing day of the Sconset Market. And he says, Mark, I got to tell you, I wasn't completely honest with you. He said, I didn't really have these tax problems. I just wanted to know if you were in there and if you were the right guy. I belong to the Sankity Club. People are speaking very highly of you. I belong to the casino. They all think you're doing a wonderful job. If you tell me you're in for the long run, it's yours. And I said, Bob, I'm in for the long run. I really want this. And he handed me the keys. Actually, back then too, we had um, you could you could have a charge at the market, oh, so you didn't even have to bring cash. It was very <laughs> informal. You just say the name, and there was a little tally, you know, that um, I guess the parents would get the bill at the end of the month or the end of the season. I know they did away with that because um, I don't know if it was bookkeeping, yeah, or the parents didn't actually want their kids to have <laughs> carte blanche at the market. So I had a tradition at the Sconset Market. And I actually instituted it. It didn't happen before I purchased it. And I said, well, gee, I should start charge accounts then because people are in bathing suits and T-shirts. And a number of people, sconsers, had actually approached me. We would like to be able to have charge accounts. So I set up a charge account system, which ran for 25 years. And it was never abused, except in the form of a kid coming in with six other kids and saying, I got this round. You know, and then <laughs> this would happen time and time again. And someone, a parent would come and say, well, I don't understand, you know, that it was just M&M's and then how did this charge get to be $100? I said, well, you, you told me it was carte blanche for your child and the time he came in, you know, he's buying for all his friends. And so, so there were some stories that went back and forth, but, but it worked out well and it was a tradition that everybody loved and I finally had to pull the plug on it. It was just, you know, when you're writing shits for one bag of M&M and then I'm going upstairs to put it all into the computer at night and I've got close to 2,000 candy bar chits to enter in. I said, all right, enough's enough. And I, there was a lot of pushback on that. That was too bad that I had to end that tradition, but it did have to come to an end.